Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Barnstable this morning, just about 10 minutes past the top of the hour on this Monday morning. I'm Sarah Colvin, and joining me live in studio, town manager Tom Lynch. Tom, good morning. Good morning. Did you have a nice 4th of July weekend? I had a wonderful 4th of July weekend. Uh, you know, following the storm on Friday, it was a beautiful weekend, lots of things to do, um, but definitely uh, had some impacts from Arthur uh, over well, the Well, it, it, it clearly disrupted our 4th of July mm -hmm. uh, activities, and I thought, you know, I'd talk a little bit about how we made the decision that we that we had to in terms of the fireworks and and uh, the various parades uh, the we were in constant contact with uh, the DPW which monitors weather very carefully we also uh, were in contact with our uh, fireworks display uh, folks and they had said early on that captains and boat owners were concerned about moving the barges into um, the, the location and uh, they were just concerned about the impending hurricane mm. uh, that was coming up the uh, the coast. <clears throat> we had been, as you might expect, making preparations for the um, the hurricane all the way along. I had been in contact with the Department of Public Works because they put together teams that are going to be going out to deal with any sort of down trees or limbs and also be looking at flooding areas and that was one concern that we began to realize was going to hit us a little more than we thought we had we knew there would be rain, um, but as it kept inching closer to Nantucket, we knew that, that, that there might be additional uh, parts of rain. So on July 4th, when I got up and it was fairly clear, the clouds started coming in, um, I knew we might get in uh, some of the morning parades mm -hmm. and went over to uh, Bonsall Village, uh, the Bonsall West Bonds will have their annual 4th of July parade. That came off pretty much without a hitch, a few, few uh, sprinkles, but uh, that worked out quite well. I was leaving that parade and <clears throat> I bumped into Sean O'Brien who's the emergency mm. management coordinator over in Fabansville County and I said that I had just been informed that that Katuit had canceled their parade and he said well I think that's a good decision because um, my wife is coming over the bridge and there's uh, you know a great deal of rain in the Buzzards, Buzzards Bay area. Well, that seemed to hold off from us, and the weather reports we saw later, of course, after the fact, were how it came up through New Bedford along that, that way, and they got, you know, five, six, seven inches of rain, and, and um, so, but Katuit uh, canceled, uh, Hyannis Port was able to do their parade, and Centerville uh, had canceled, and of course, uh, Hyannis, so uh, once the rains came in, um, you know, we, I was getting updates from uh, Marine Environmental Affairs. One of, one of the areas I saw the photo that you had uh, earlier, that spectacular picture on yes. Sandy Deck. Um, we had made arrangements and actually did a recommendation that um, camper campers may want to leave the beach mm -hmm. because of the tidal uh, flow that was coming in, and uh, we had made arrangements to have um, the uh, school parking lots be used uh, for over to to you know, accommodate the campus overnight. Right. And uh, some took advantage of that. A few came off. I think most just weathered the storm in place. And uh, as you pointed out, we're maintaining that spot for the beautiful weekend uh, th that was to was to come. The aftermath of the storm was that we had, um, uh, and well, actually, during the storm too, we had to help with pumping out of several boats. There was the Coast Guard brought uh, one boat over to Blish Point that. Uh, Marine Environmental Affairs uh, and Harbor Master's Office uh, supported and helped. Um, there were um, swampings and really just about Lewis Bay, the three bays, and Bonstable um, and, and Millway, so practically all of the areas uh, there were some boats or swamp that needed assistance. And what we do in that instance is we naturally, it's one reason we keep all the registrations and all of that, we've, we've got all the numbers, we're contacting uh, own uh, the owners of the, the vessels so let them know. Sometimes they may want to deal with it during the storm if mm -hmm. it's safe or otherwise just weather it and be sure to get it off the beach or, or uh, bailed out as soon as they can afterwards. So um, I spoke to, you know, Dan Horn and, and uh, Derek Lawson and, and um, of course Lynn was informing, Lynn Point was informing me of, of things that went on, but they felt overall we, we weathered it, all of that um, uh, pretty well. And of course, the DPW uh, was out the next day with certain limb damage, and mm. although there didn't seem to be a lot of that and and flooding that we needed um, to take care of, so all in all, I think had it continued to have been bad weather, we right. might have felt that gee, we really got got whacked. But it came in, it went out, and uh, 
just glorious days on on uh, Saturday and Sunday. I knew, I know the hub master was a little concerned with some of the small craft advisories, but I should point out also that um, they worked in the boat parade. Oh, did so they, they? They were able to get the boat parade, um, which was around one o'clock, I think, and I understand about 15 boats, you know, participated, right. and, and, and it worked out fairly well. After that, the weather went downhill pretty quickly. It did. And um, it would have been um, impossible to have the, the late afternoon and evening events that we had tried to play in Hyannis. Absolutely. It was definitely a windy, wet, and wild uh, for Friday night. But again, as you say, it cleared out Saturday morning, and Saturday and Sunday were just a spectacular days. Well, and just in going around the Cape, whether there were lines at the Daily Paper, went down to say, oh, well, let, let's get a bite down by the waterfront could not get a parking place yeah. <laughs> and people were hovering and waiting and so it's one reason the meters are there to have turnover but uh, it wasn't even turning over that, that <laughs> fast so um, I think that you know you, the reports you've seen in the media from uh, various folks seem to uh, you know merchants seem to be that um, people did well on Friday in terms of coming down yeah. and, and shopping stayed for the weekend and uh, were rewarded with some glorious weather Indeed, indeed, and, and hopefully we'll have glorious weather uh, for the next uh, kind of big outdoor event that we have uh, here on the Village Green, and that's Pops by the Sea. Pops by the Sea, where this week we actually have a planning session for that. So um, just like the 4th of July events that we're planning well in advance, this has been the planning for this event has gone on uh, for some time, and uh, we'll meet with <clears throat> Kevin Howard, the executive director of the uh, Arts Foundation, and sit down with his staff and go over all of the logistics that happen in terms of traffic, trash, uh, you know, making sure that the, 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 the space, the parking, everything is, is uh, in place for both the performers and those of us that will be attending the event. So. Indeed, and uh, Town Council, I believe, meets this week as well, so the agenda will be decided we'll, early this we'll week. We'll have an agenda setting meeting tomorrow where uh, I know there's going to be a presentation on um, the Rio Pirates uh, Museum that's, that's coming up. Um, we hope to be able to do something on the, um, the shooting range that's still uh, to be determined based on where we are with all of those uh, negotiations and um, I'm sure there'll be grant acceptances and things that have been a little backed up because we just do the one uh, meeting a month uh, in July and August. So. Absolutely. And one last thing I want to talk about is uh, bike path planning. Of course, now that the weather's out, I've seen cyclists mm -hmm. all over the place. I've been out on my bicycle. Um, and I know that, that there's been discussion plans in the works for extending uh, the rail trail through. Um, and is that what we're talking about? The yes. Extent, and, and we actually, rail trail? you know, we had, we had a meeting last week on Friday with, uh, on Thursday with uh, Sue Robach, who's, who's been worked on this first with former Senator O'Leary and also uh, now with Senator Dan Wolf and trying to uh, put everything in place and there are, there's funding in place for the Yarmouth extension that's mm -hmm. in there. Um, then there's an extension, a further extension in Yarmouth that needs to go from Yarmouth uh, <clears throat> up to Willow Street. Um, we put together a timeline to show that we're, we're, we're planning years out here, you know, but there's a, there are set things that need to happen in terms of easements that are put in place, some land swaps that uh, need to be there. Um, we're on uh, getting on a funding schedule that'll probably be, be two or three years out, mm. but it's work that needs to be put in place now because there are decisions that various boards need to make, whether it's Conservation Commission or Fisheries and, and Wildlife at the state level. We need to get something on the agenda uh, for the council. Uh, which we'll be doing in the fall. So that planning I is ongoing, and this is a good time to be able to do that. We have um, time to, to sit down and think through uh, some of these issues. So that's Wonderful. one of the ones that's on the agenda. Looking forward to it. Well, Tom, thank you so much, as always, for joining us here on Barnstable this Very morning. Good. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks so much. Tom Lynch, of course, our town manager here in the town of Barnstable. Dr. Mary Chikowski.